Hi friends, welcome to Julia at Home. I'm Julia. Today's video is about fall books. It's been feeling like fall for a couple weeks now and it's just about to be the fall equinox. This hopefully will be going up on the fall equinox. So if so, happy equinox. And this is the final of the four seasons in my picture book series. So I will make sure I link the winter, spring and summer uh, books uh, videos below. I am not including my Halloween and Thanksgiving books. I will do separate videos on those this year, so look forward to that. And I'm gonna get started. I like to start with some baby books. I do have a 15 month old and I've had these for all of my kids. So this is just a, a fall touch and feel book. It's got, um, you can see the, the leaf has like this little glitter, it's like texture on it. And um, it's gotten a lot of love, so it's a little bit beat up but hopefully it'll last. Um, so it's just things that are related to fall and there's sensory elements in it. So it's just a cute little sensory fall book. Autumn, so again, I have the whole series and these will all be linked below. This is Autumn by Ger Gerda Muller. In case you haven't seen my other videos, these, these books are great because they actually don't have any words. And so in a way they're really good um, addition to your home for language because you can talk with your child or children about what you're seeing in the pictures. So it doesn't feel, um, it's actually in a way not as limiting as a book with words. Of course you can expand on books that have words in them, but there's just a lot more that the children can like make up their own story and what's happening. And that's the really cool thing. Plus the pictures are gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So that's Autumn by Gerda Muller. This one's a little beaten up, it's a used copy, but we've really enjoyed this book. This is The Lonely Scarecrow. And I actually usually pull it out in more like late October, early November, like kind of in that transition period of winter, uh, fall, winter, um, and you'll see why. But there's a lonely scarecrow in the field and because all the animals are scared of him, which is his job. And um, he gets snowed upon and he becomes a snowman and doesn't look scary anymore. And so he gets animal friends. And so he's not lonely anymore. Um, so that's, I mean, it's not working as well for the farmer, but it's a nice story for kids about the lonely scarecrow. We're going on a leaf hunt. I think I showed this one in my tree resources. Um, I think I showed this one in my unit study video on trees. And um, this is great for the fall. It just goes through, if you know, uh, we're going on a bear hunt. It's that same rhythm and cadence. And it's it's a play off of that. But instead of going on a bear hunt, you're going to search for colorful leaves. So, and then you go the different trees to get those leaves and colorful leaves. And so there's just a lot to talk about little kids in here. And it's a fun rhyme and then you can go see how many of these or other leaves you can find yourselves and go on your own leaf hunt which is probably more realistic than going on your own bear hunt we gather together celebrating the harvest season so this is about the fall equinox and um it's the time it's the day of the year when the light and dark are equal so that's where it is so once the fall equinox passes in the Northern Hemisphere, here is it's in September. Um, I believe it's, yeah, it'd be in March in the Southern Hemisphere. The days start getting shorter than the nights until you get um, back to the spring equinox when it's equal again. Um, so I like to mark the solstices and the equinoxes and this book just talks about um, facts about like what's happening in the fall equinox. Um, like it actually shows you the earth going around the sun and, and why that happens, but also just the, you know, how people have perceived it and its cultural implications as well, because, um, you know, there's a lot of holidays around this time of year in different cultures. And so it goes, it goes through some of those. And I, I mean, I have always really loved this time of year. Um, and this is part of a series by Wendy Pfeiffer. I'm not sure if I'm saying her name right, but I'll link this below as well. Um, I don't know. I think I have, there's a couple different, there's like two different series. And I think the other ones I have are also Wendy Pfeiffer, but I have to double check. Um, there's, there's two series that I sometimes look at of books on the solstices and equinoxes. So 
um, yes, we have the shortest day. And that I'm pretty sure that one was in my winter uh, book video, um, which is also part of the series. And I'm, I think she has the spring one too. And I honestly don't know if she's a summer one. So I have to look into that. By the Light of the Harvest Moon. This is one of my favorite books ever. Just not just fall ever. <laughs> and it's mainly because I love the pictures and it's just so magical. Um, so this is by Harriet Ziefert and illustrated by Mark Jones. She has a couple other books that are also magical and I should, I should look into them because I love this one so much. Um, see if it's the same illustrator, Mark Jones, because I love this. I mean, it just evokes that like romantic feeling of fall so well. And it's on a farm. But here's the thing. We're, it's not just a normal farm here. <laughs> We're going to add an element of magic. <laughs> there are leaf people that are made of leaves with pumpkin heads. And they come to celebrate. They come to celebrate the fall equinox. And they have a dessert party. And this picture, I just want to make a party that's themed around this book and like this picture here because that is fantastic. I am actually hosting a small family harvest party this year. I don't think I'm going to get to this level, but it's it's a goal one day. <laughs> one day I'll get there. Yes. So if you're not, if you know, if you don't like to do a lot of magic in your books, this is not going to be the one for you. If you're like a pure Montessori and you don't normally do a lot of, you know, magic and fantasy before the age of six, but I don't follow that. So for me, this is just one of my favorites and my kids know I make sure I read it multiple times every year. The Little Yellow Leaf. And this is just about a leaf hanging on. And this is another one that I, I often pull out more towards the end of fall um, because it, it's that last leaf hanging out on the tree. So this is actually also a great like November book for where we are. But obviously all these fall things are going to change like when things happen and how much fall you actually experience depending on where you live. So you could pull these out. Like if you live in like Florida or somewhere really warm where you might not get as much of a fall, pull these out and just, you know, maybe cut out paper leaves or something. Um, to just appreciate, you can appreciate fall even if you can't, even if you can't feel it. And also just connect, find books and find connections to what fall means for you. So a little, little side note there, but this book is beautiful. I believe it's um, collage, the illustrations. I think it's like recycled paper collage. So the little yellow leaf does find a friend. It's a spoiler, but... It's a sweet book. And there's Woody, Hazel, and Little Pip. And this is an Elsa Beskow book. This is on a little bit of a long side. So if you have kids that don't sit for as long, you might actually want to try doing this in more than one sitting. Um, but it's about these, it's like the acorn children, the different tree seed nuts um, families, and they go on an adventure the acorn children do um and it takes place in the fall and I love her pictures again this is magic so more so for my people that like Waldorfy style less so than the Montessori um but I I'm not a purist in any uh philosophy that I follow um so this this works well for me it can get a little bit scary. I will warn you that if you have especially sensitive children, but everything does turn out okay in the end. And I actually think it's a good lesson. <laughs> and yeah, I love the pictures. So that is Woody, Hazel, and Little Pip by Elsa Besco. I'm going to see if somebody else has already done this, but because they probably have, but I think it would be really cool to make like little peg people or something of the different um, characters in this book and then the kids could act it out. I just, I just think that would be fun. These next ones are more on the fun side. So, um, well, this is a baby book that I, I didn't show you earlier, but I kind of held it back. This is in the garden with Van Gogh. So this is not strictly fall related. Um, it's really, it could be summer too, but I really like this series and I don't know if it was this one or it might've been Monet that I put in the 
summer that was in the summer videos um there's a whole i think they have a couple series i mean it's one series but i think they have a couple sets that you can get um of the little artist series i think is what it's called mini masters the mini master series again it will be linked below so this is um in the garden with van gogh there's also a magical day with matisse a picnic with monet dancing with degas painting with picasso sharing with renoir sunday with Seurat, quiet time with cassat and um yeah those are the ones that are listed on this book so there could be more um and these are just i love these so highly recommend i should probably explain a little bit <laughs> it's rhyming verse and it shows the picture and, and all the the illustrations Ooh, glare all the illustrations are um, work from that artist. So these are all Van Gogh pictures, paintings. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> I don't normally recommend these kinds of series, but I really like the story of this one. This is Tractor Mac Harvest Time. And um, I just think it's a really good story. And it's a great one for preschoolers um, because it's it's kind of the it, it kind of they, they figure out how to solve a problem and work together to make things work better and make everybody happy um yeah by working together and they have a wonderful harvest i won't i won't go through the whole synopsis but i i enjoy this one um i think my son picked this out because vehicles and tractors <laughs> he likes them um and i would say this is like at first i thought it was going to be like little blue truck but it's definitely um a step or two up as far as like there's more of a story to it. I don't think the little boot trucks really have stories. So um, I, I enjoy this and I like to put it out on our shelves for fall. They also have a lot of other books, including more seasonal ones. So they have Tractor Max Saves Christmas. We don't have that one yet, but my son really wants to get that. So I'm going to be keeping an eye out for that. But yeah, they have um, they have a variety of them. And I just I really enjoyed the story. So the others might be worth looking into as well. And this one's not directly fall related. Actually, the next two are not, but um, they, they're tangential to fall. This is too many carrots because I often harvest my carrots towards this time of year. Um, although you could in the summer as well. And it's just, it's just a funny, but we have this in board book form, but you can get it in non board book form. <laughs> um, but this is good if you have toddlers. Um, it's a little long for the top, like my 15 month old definitely wouldn't sit through this right now. Um, and I think it depends on the child. So if you have a two or three year old that really like being read to, they will sit through this. I have, I've had two of those so far, um, yet to see what the, this current one year old is not going to sit through this whole thing. Um, we'll have to see when she's two or three, if she does, I'm hopeful because she likes to pretend to read like her sister, which is adorable. Um, maybe I'll insert a picture here because it's adorable. Um, but yeah, uh, it, de it depends on the child. So, um, this one again is not, uh, directly about fall, but this isn't, um, Osborne and Kane Miller, I think it is a uh, book. And this is a tale of two beasts by Fiona Robertson. And I think this is so fun. It takes place in the autumn and it's, um, it's, uh, the same story told from two perspectives. So first you hear the story told by the the human girl, <laughs> And she tells her story from her side and what happens. And then part two is from what I think is a squirrel from the squirrel's point of view. And they're both calling each other the terrible beast. So that's why it's a tale of two beasts. Um, and yes, I enjoy this. My kids enjoy this. This is fun. And there's also a lesson in it because you have to, you know, you're learning that there are two sides to the story. These last two, I'm going to call bonus books. Now, um, I mentioned earlier that we're going, I'm going to save Halloween and Thanksgiving books for other videos. I actually have a bunch of each, um, but I, I have a couple books on some of the Jewish fall holidays that I think are great, even if you're not Jewish. So, um, I, okay, this, okay. I'm just going to jump in and show you because I love this book and it's relevant because Rosh Hashanah happens in September or October every year. 
And um, yes, so let me let me show you and then I'll explain more. This is a moon for Mo and Mo. And it's actually about a Jewish boy and a Muslim boy who live on the same street. And in this book, it happens that Rosh Hashanah and Ramadan are taking place at the same time. Now that happens occasionally, but uh, Ramadan moves around a lot. So currently, um, I believe in 2021, it's going to be, it's going to start in April or go through most of April. I'm not 100% sure, but it's going to be in the spring. Rosh Hashanah is always in the fall. Um, but I still, I just think this is a beautiful book and I wanted to share it. So um, basically they meet up and they notice how similar they are and they become friends and they have their families end up getting together and, um, you know, they're wishing each other, you know, a happy new year and a blessed Ramadan um, and just basically learning about each other. And it's just, it's also just about respecting, respecting each other and kind of the idea that even though one family is Jewish and one family is Muslim and they have their own traditions, that they can um, still wish each other peace and, um, you know, and get along. So just showing you that the illustrations are a little different there. So I just think it's a beautiful message and a and beautifully written story. And so um, I would recommend that. Um, I read it to my kids for, um, well, as I'm, as I'm filming, uh, we're still in Rosh Hashanah, but I read it before Rosh Hashanah started. Um, we are not Jewish, but I do have family and friends who are, and I do like to expose my children to all different religions. And so I do, um, even though we don't do a full, you know, Shabbat and the full Rosh Hashanah, um, service or anything, um, I do like, I, I do like for us to know what's going on and to respect those traditions. So that's a moon for Mo and Mo. And the other one is Sukkot. And I love Sukkot. It's such a cool holiday. It's a harvest holiday and you're celebrating the harvest. And I don't know if it's always in October this year. It's in October, um, but it's obviously always in the fall. And um, actually when I was younger and I attended a Presbyterian church, we would actually do celebrate Sukkot there. And we would do a Sukkot, like build a Sukkah, which is like the structure and hang things from it and, and the whole thing. Um, and I've always just thought it was super cool. Um, and I used to take this out from the library every year when we lived in Maryland. And so this is, I bought it this year because <laughs> I missed it. And this is Bubby Isabella and the Sukkot cake. And it doesn't matter if you're Jewish or if you understand what Sukkot is, you can enjoy this story because Bubby Isabella is there with her cake and she doesn't have anyone to share it with. And all of these animals come in to share her cake with her. <laughs> share things happen and at the end um a boy comes around and she um she helps the boy find a flag for simchat torah um which is kind of the end of uh the sukkot it's kind of the end of the sukkot holiday and um and she goes, she helps him find a flag and she goes with him. So if you're not Jewish, you might not get some of those details, but I think the story holds up really well and can be understood really by everybody. And I think in today's, in this year's holidays, holiday season, when we all may not be able to see family as much as we want to, then um, more people will see themselves in Bubby Isabella. Um, and it's, it's something to relate to. So Bubby Isabella and the Sukkot Cake. This is kind of like one of my, it's my second bonus book there. Those are all of my fall books I have to share with you today. I'm sure I will add to my collection in the future. I find, I think fall books just usually are just gorgeous. Um, and that's not an exhaustive list of all the good fall books there are out there. Those are just the ones I have right now. So 
Hopefully you found something in there that you enjoy and I hope you get some time to read to your kids, co cozy up on the couch, whether it's hot or cold where you are, you can still cozy up on the couch and read some fall books. I will talk to you later, friends.